Let's take a look at how to add and subtract rational numbers. Add, simplify your answer, and write it as a proper fraction or as a whole or mixed number. Okay, in the first one, we have 5 and 1 6 plus 3. Okay, so what I want to do is I can just add the whole numbers, right? I know my answer is going to be a mixed number. If I have a 5 and a 3, right, those parts are whole numbers. So 5 plus 3, I can add together and say 5 plus 3 gives me 8. And then I'm still going to have that little fraction part of 1 6. So this is going to give me 8 and 1 6. Okay, now normally we do take this mixed number and we turn it into an improper. But in this case, since they both have whole number parts, we know we can just add the whole number parts together. Right, that's where the 5 plus 3 gave us 8. And then we just know we're going to have that extra 1 6 with it. That's a little easier in this case. Negative 6 and 4 fifths plus negative 8 and 5 sevenths. Okay, well in this case, since they're both mixed numbers, why don't we turn them into improper fractions and we'll just do the whole process this time. Okay, so the easiest way to take your mixed number and turn it into an improper fraction, and I know if this was a negative as a whole number, it's gonna be a negative as a mixed number. So I'm just gonna bring that negative out front, or as, I'm sorry, as an improper fraction. The easiest way to convert it is to say, okay, well six times five gives me 30, right? So 30 over five would be the whole number of six plus there's an extra four. So 30 plus four. So we're multiplying by the denominator, right? Six times five to get that 30. And then we're adding the numerator, which is the extra. So 30 plus four gives me 34. And it's always gonna be out of the same denominator as you had. So I can write this as negative 34 over five. Plus, now I'm gonna do the exact same thing over here. This was a negative number, so it's gonna be a negative when I convert it to an improper fraction. And again, you multiply the whole number times the numerator, right? So eight times seven gives us 56. And then you add what you had on the top. So 56 plus the extra five gives us 61 out of seven. Okay, and of course, we need common denominators to add these two fractions together. So the common denominator for 5 and 7, well, I can multiply them together, and that would tell me my common denominator is 35. Okay, so they're both going to be negative numbers. I'm going to write them both as out of 35. Now here, to get from 5 to 35, I would have to multiply by 7. So I want to make sure I do the exact same thing on the top and multiply by 7. Okay, well, 7 times 34, that gives me 238. And I don't have to worry about the negative because I already put my negative sign there. So, yeah, the whole thing is going to be negative 238 over 35. I want to do the exact same thing here. Okay, to get from 7 to 35, I multiplied the bottom or denominator by 5. So I'm going to do the same thing on the top. And I already put the negative here, so I don't have to worry about that. 61 times 5 gives me 305. All right, so now I'm adding these together, right? Negative 238 over 35 plus negative 305 over 35. Now, keep in mind, when you're adding with the same sign, either both positive or both negative, your answer is going to have that same sign. So if I'm adding two negative numbers together, my whole answer is going to be negative. We had that common denominator of 35, so I'm also going to have that same denominator of 35 in my answer. Okay, well, we already took care of the negative sign. We said when we're adding two negatives, it's going to be negative. So now I simply add these numbers together. Okay, 238 plus 305 
And that's going to give me 543. Okay, so now I have an improper fraction, and my final step is to turn it into a mixed number. So to do that, I want to say, well, how many times does 35 go into 543? Well, I know my whole answer is going to be negative, so I'm going to just bring that negative sign out front. And let's see. Well, 35 times 10 would be 350. 35 times 15 is 525. That's pretty close. I think it's going to go in 15 times, which gives me 525. And then if I subtract to see what's left for the fraction part of my mixed number, well, 543 minus the 525 that this gave me leaves me with an extra 18. And that's an extra 18 out of 35. Okay, and I don't think I can simplify or reduce that because, let's see, I have factors of... For 18, 2, 3, 9, for 35, 5, 7, they don't share any common factors. So I'm going to leave this as negative 15 and 18 over 35. And guys, I just want to point out before I submit this answer, notice we had to really take our time and go through these steps. So really, don't rush through these problems. You have to take your time and do all the little steps to correctly get to the final answer. Okay, negative four and one half plus negative three and five eighths. Okay, so my first step is I'm going to turn both of these mixed numbers into improper fractions to make it a little easier for me to add everything together. Now, I actually do have two options. If I wanted to add the whole number part and then just work with the, the fraction part, I could do that. But let's just do it this way. It's, it's, it's going to be about the same. Okay, so I know my first number is negative. I'm going to bring that negative out front. And remember, the easiest way to turn that mixed number into an improper fraction was to multiply the whole number by the denominator, right? Four times two gives me eight. Add the numerator, so plus one gives me nine. And then that's going to be over whatever the denominator or bottom was. Okay, so that's going to be negative nine over two. Okay, plus my second number was also negative, And I'm going to do the same process here. Okay, so remember we multiply the whole number by the denominator. 3 times 8 is 24. Add the numerator. Okay, so 24 plus 5 is 29. And that's out of the same denominator of 8. And notice I already put the negatives here, so I didn't have to worry about that part. And now I need a common denominator to add these together. Okay, well, my common denominator is going to be 8 because 2 goes into 8. Okay, so both of these were negative. I'm going to leave the negatives out front. Okay, the second one I don't have to change. I'm going to, let's see, can we see this negative? We can see this negative. Okay. The second one I can leave as negative 29 over 8 because I don't have to change the denominator there. For this one, the first one, I do need to change the denominator. I went from 2 to 8, which means I multiplied the bottom by 4. So I have to multiply that 9 on the top by 4, which gives me 36. And again, the negatives are out front, so I don't have to worry too much about those. Now, when I add them together, I know when I add two signs, if they're either both positive or both negative, right, they have the same sign, that's going to be on my answer. So since I add two negatives together, my answer is also going to be negative. These both had a denominator of 8. So my answer is also going to have a denominator of 8. And then I'm simply going to add the 36 and the 29 that I have on the top. Okay, so 36 plus 29 gives me 65. 
Okay, so I've got negative 65 over 8, and then I want to turn that into a mixed number. Well, how many times, I know my whole answer is going to be negative, right? I can already cross off these two positive answers. How many times does 8 go into 65? 8 times, right? 8 times 8 is, is 64, so 8 times with 1 left over out of 8. So that's going to be negative 8 and 1 eighth. In this case, I have two whole numbers, right? Negative 10 plus negative 2. So keep in mind, they're both negatives. So if I add two negatives together, my answer is going to be negative. And 10 plus 2 is 12. So I would get negative 12. 